Hello students, welcome to lecture 14 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on Analysis and Engineering of 2D Photonic Band Structures. So, today we will be discussing the physical origin of photonic band gaps that will cover the meaning of photonic band gap, how do we fabricate those structures and how do you get the band gap. We'll discuss about the working mechanism of photonic band gaps, the physics behind it, formation, and then we will take up an example of 2D photonic crystal and do the band structure analysis using a video. We'll show you the simulation of a band diagram using COMSOL multiphysics. Okay, so let us first discuss about the physical origin of photonic band gaps. So, a photonic band gap crystal is basically a structure that can manipulate beams of light in the same way, you know, electrons could or you can say the semiconductors could control the flow of electrons or the electric current. A semiconductor can support, a semiconductor cannot support electrons of energy that lies within the electronic band gap. And similarly, a photonic crystal also cannot support photons which has got energy lying within the photonic band gap. By preventing or allowing light, you know, based on its energy to propagate through the crystal or getting reflected, you know, you can do light processing. And that is where, you know, photonic band gap crystals are used for. So, how is it fabricated? So, as you already know that photonic crystals usually consist of uh, dielectric materials Okay, that is uh, materials that can serve as electrical insulators or in which, you know, an electromagnetic field can propagate with minimal loss. Uh, holes which are of the order of, you know, wavelength can be drilled into a dielectric uh, medium in a lattice kind of structure and it can be repeated periodically at regular intervals and that can give you a crystal. So, if you build that precisely, the resulting holy crystal will have what is called as the photonic band gap. That means, it will have a range of frequencies or wavelength which will be blocked from entering into that particular crystal. So, how does it work? As I mentioned in semiconductors, electrons get scattered by the row of atoms in the lattice which are separated by a few nanometers and consequently a electronic band gap is formed okay and the resulting band structure can be modified by doping in the semiconductors right in a photonic crystal perfor perforations or the holes which are drilled okay these are basically analogous to the atoms that is in the semiconductor right so here when light enters a perforated material that will get reflected and refracted from the interface between glass and air. Where is air? That is basically the hole, right? So, you have usually these are made on uh, silica uh, material or silica slab. So, that is why, you know, glass is mentioned, okay? So, a complex pattern of overlapping beams could actually lead to cancellation of a particular band in all directions which tells you that that particular you know uh, wavelength is not allowed to propagate through the crystal and that is how you get your band gap. So, the resulting photonic band structure can be modified by filling some of those holes or by creating defects like making a smaller hole or a larger hole which is otherwise a very perfectly periodic system. So, in the 19th century Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism which was later verified by Hertz that laid the foundation for wireless communication that involves you know modern radio, TV, telephone and mobile phone right not mainly mobile phone yeah we are talking about the wireless communication right. So, recent discoveries reveal that you know light waves can also be trapped not just propagated. So, trapping and micro molding light require materials with stronger light matter interactions and stronger light scattering than the natural ones. So, multiple light scattering occurs on cloudy days 
okay, that we can see okay, with sunlight getting scattered from the water droplets in a cloud and the mean free path is the distance light travels in the cloud before you know getting scattered randomly. So, when you talk about light transmission through a cloud, it basically gets reduced based on the cloud thickness to mean free path ratio. Okay? So, that actually tells you why the clouds appear white. Okay? It is because of the multiple scattering. Now, with the invention of the laser uh, that actually revolutionized light technology that allows precise probing of matter. Okay? So, you know you can actually use it for uh, advanced medical tools, high speed data transmission, something like fiber optic cables, which allows uh, global communication. But with all of these, what is important is that clouds or human tissue, they scatter light strongly enough to localize it. So, when you say localization, Localization requires microscopic dielectric structures that could scatter light a thousand times more strongly than human tissue. Okay? So, this results in a uh, transport mean free path which is as short as the length of the light's wavelength. So, a periodic arrangement of this kind of scatterers can basically remove light propagation pathways over specific, you know. Uh, frequency interval and that is the physics behind the photonic band gap. So, complete removal of light propagation pathways over a band of frequencies in all directions could create the photonic band gap PBG. So, dielectric microstructures that exhibit this kind of effect are known as PBG materials. In electronic microcircuits, thin metal wires guide electrical currents. Okay, where basically the electrons are confined by the metal's work function. And if you think of optical wave, they differ. Though optical fibers guide light, uh, microcircuits of light based on fibers are not feasible because light could escape into the background. So, empty space is basically an ideal conductor for light waves which allows light in optical fiber to escape. Okay? So, fiber if it is banned or distorted microscopically there is leakage. So, PBG materials could solve this issue by eliminating all background micro uh, electromagnetic modes over specific uh, frequency bands and that is why when you have uh, photonic band gap crystal being used for very sharp bands there is no leakage. So, you can actually guide light over very sharp bands in micrometer or micrometer scale. So, light paths can be engineered within uh, PBG materials as uh, waveguide channels uh, localizing the light and preventing it from escaping uh, the optical micro circuit. Okay? So, now let us look into uh, more fundamentals of how exactly the photonic band gap is created. So, the question of whether light can be localized okay, can be posed in the form of an analogy between Maxwell's equation for electromagnetic waves propagation and Schrodinger's wave or Schrodinger's equation for electron propagation. Now, let us consider a monochromatic uh, electromagnetic wave of frequency omega uh, propagating in a medium whose uh, dielectric constant varies from a point to a point in space which is given by this particular equation. So, you know there is a fluctuation in the dielectric uh, constant which is given like this. So, we assume that the dielectric microstructure does not absorb the light and the total dielectric constant everywhere is real and positive. Okay? So, in that case, you know the wave equation for such an optical field can be given by this equation which is equation B. Okay? And uh, this can be written in a form which resembles the quantum mechanical Schrodinger's equation. 
right. So, here the first two terms that you see are analogous to the kinetic energy terms in Schrodinger's equation, okay. And uh, unlike uh, electrons which can be trapped and localized for negative eigenvalues, okay. So, here you can see that uh, this term is analogous to the energy eigenvalue and this fluctuation term, okay, this plays the role of the scattering potential, right. So, unlike electrons which can be uh, trapped and localized for um, negative eigenvalues which are bound states in corresponding negative uh, energy potential wells, the overall positivity of the dielectric constant in this particular equation leads to the constraint that the energy eigenvalue is always greater than the highest of the potential barriers presented by the scattering potential. So, with that you can think of the formation of photonic band gap. So, the photonic band gap formation can be understood as a synergetic interplay between two distinct resonance scattering mechanism. So, what are those? The first one is the microscopic scattering resonance from the dielectric material contained in a unit cell of the photonic crystal. So, here you can see you can consider a periodic variation of permittivity. So, this is the lattice constant L okay, and you can think of this is done by you know some kind of sphere air air sphere which is drilled and you can take why I call this as air because this is the lower refractive index and this is the higher refractive index. So, this radius can be marked as A. Okay. Now, this actually shows the scattering of a wave by a square well potential. Okay. When you can see here when half of the optical wavelength fits into the width of the well that is the case where transmission from left to right is maximum and least amount of light is reflected. But when one quarter of the wavelength fits into this well width, that time least amount of light is transmitted and the maximum amount of light is reflected. So, maximum you know reflection happens when you know lambda by 4 equals 2a. This is the, the width of the well is 2a and that is equal to lambda by 4. Okay. So, that way you can also find out okay, that what is the condition for maximum reflection. So, this is for individual. So, one resonance is for the single unit cell and then th there is another type of resonance which is the macroscopic resonance from the geometrical arrangement of the repeating unit cells of the dielectric microstructure. Right. So, that is basically you now um, telling you about the other resonance. So, if there is a periodic arrangement of unit cell which is there in the photonic crystal, you can call this this kind of scattering as Bragg scattering, right. So, this occurs when the you know spacing between the unit cells which is basically the lattice constant L is basically an integer multiple of lambda by 2. So, here you can see that is the case when the resonance happens and maximum reflection takes place. So, if you see this k vector, okay, so at integral multiple of pi by L, okay, there is this kind of reflection that means band gap formation taking place. So, what you understood that band gap formation is basically facilitated if the geometrical parameters of the photonic crystal are chosen such that both microscopic that is within one unit cell what is happening that resonance and what or the, the overall periodic structure that is the Bragg uh, scattering resonance that is the macroscopic resonance both can coincide at the same wavelength and that is where you will be able to see the photonic band gap formation. Okay? So, here is the dispersion relation which is omega k diagram in case of photon in vacuum. So, you can see a straight line. In the case of uh, you know photon in a periodic dielectric medium, you can see the, that the relation more or less you know follows that similar pattern, but there are discontinuities at integral multiple of pi pi l. Okay? 
Okay. So, we have also understood that this kind of alternative dielectric structures when they are having high contrast that can give rise to wider band gap okay, and the band gap size can thus be changed. This is how you know what happens in a 2D photonic band gap. So, you can think of a single scatterer which can you know this is a dielectric material. So, when a plane wave falls on that the part of the plane wave which is going through this material slows down because the speed of light in this material will be you know uh, reduced by a factor of n which is the refractive index of this material uh, as compared to the vacuum speed of light okay or you can say speed of light in vacuum okay so that way you can see that if you have a periodic modulation like this the amplitude of the wave will also get modulated but then every unit cell produces some reflected wave okay and when the reflected and the refracted wave they can combine and cancel out the incoming wave you can say that you know there is photonic band gap and that has to happen in all possible direction to give you a complete photonic band gap now let us go into the analysis of band structure for a 2d photonic crystal so now here we will see how to simulate the band diagram for a 2D photonic crystal in, um, in a commercially available FEM software that is finite element method software COMSOL. We will not go into more details of COMSOL, we will just show you an example how to do it. Okay? You can do it using other methods as well. Okay? This, this is popularly used uh, for calculating band gap. So, we are showing some example here. Okay? And uh, we will take this particular example from the book, which is from the chapter 5 of uh, this particular book. Okay? So, there is a video coming in the after, after this slide that will explain uh, you know, all the physics and how to simulate this structure. So, what is this structure? As you can see, this is basically a hexagonal array of uh, holes being drilled in a particular uh, dielectric medium. So, uh, this is the rhombus that is shown here. Okay? So, these are the coordinates marked 0, 0, minus a 0, minus you know 3 by 2 a comma root 3 by 2 a this point and this point is this one. Okay? So, I think in the video there is a typo here. So, you just take this as the correct one in the video there is a typo. So, ignore that and we will show you how to get this kind of a band gap. So, now we will show you a video that show you the method of calculating all these things and generating this uh, photonic band diagram in COMSOL. So, this is done by Dibaskar Vissas who is the TA for this course. Okay. Uh, so, um, hello students. Uh, so, in this video uh, um, we will uh, see that uh, how uh, our we can simulate uh, the uh, photonic band diagram of a 2D photonic crystals. Uh, so here uh, I have taken uh, this actually uh, structure from the book uh, called the uh, molding the flow of light. Uh, so you can see that uh, this is a kind of uh, structure. So uh, these, uh, this box actually the, the rectangular 3D box it is a dielectric uh, box and inside this box uh, circular holes uh, have been drilled. Uh, so, uh, you can see that uh, this uh, is a kind of a lattice structure and this is actually repeated uh, along the entire um, rectangular box and uh, so you can, uh, so we shall uh, um, simulate this band diagram as you can see here uh, for both the T modes and uh, TM modes and uh, uh, in the software commercially available uh, that is COMSOL. So, uh, before that, uh, uh, we shall uh, quickly go through the uh, basics and uh, basic theory um, of it that how we can calculate uh, the band diagram. So, we need to uh, see that. So, first of all, we see that uh, uh, this is a circular like this is a, a hexagonal uh, shape lattice. And uh, so, and uh, also we can uh, derive the rhombus um, lattice also by taking the midpoint of all the circles. Uh, the uh, sorry, the center of all the circles joining the, all the centers, we get the rhombus unit cell. And uh, the uh, A is the lattice periodicity or lattice constant, or we can say that uh, the length of the rhombus uh, is given by the, um, the lattice constant actually. So, uh, we shall uh, 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 work on the uh, rhombus unit cell. 
uh, in Comsol. So as you have seen uh, from the uh, from lecture nine actually uh, that uh, for a uh, hexagonal lattice or rhombus lattice uh, the uh, in real space uh, in reciprocal space uh, we uh, get uh, the uh, hexagonal we get a hexagonal uh, brillouin zone and for a triangular lattice we get a triangular brillouin zone or square lattice sorry uh, for a square lattice we get uh, a triangular uh, brillouin zone so here uh, first of all uh, for um, uh, simulating the band structure in Comsol, we need to uh, see uh, how a rhombus actually uh, is drawn. So for uh, a rhombus, uh, we um, uh, we need to know first know the coordinates uh, of it. Uh, so the height of the um, uh, the rhombus actually it is uh, given by the root three a by two, and uh, the coordinates are actually here the zero comma zero. This is the minus a zero. Uh, minus root 3 by 2 and minus a by 2 root 3 by 2 because uh, this will uh, come as a midpoint length. But here actually we are con uh, we are uh, simulating the band structure in a 2D platform. So uh, we are concerned only with A1 and A2 vectors. So A3 will be taken as a constant here. So as as we take the A3 uh, vector as a constant number, so it gets cancelled out. So from there, uh, B1 can be calculated as this. That is cannot times root 3 by 2 AX minus half AY and B2 is uh, cannot times AY. So here cannot is nothing but a number actually. So in order to simplify the um, our formula, uh, the expression for B1 and B2, we have written cannot as uh, this uh, 4 pi by uh, root 3 A0. Now uh, after uh, uh, calculating the uh, the reciprocal space vectors, now we need to, uh, we shall go for the uh, irreducible brilliant zone. That is here. So you can see that uh, this is the brillouin zone, and this is the irreducible brillouin zone. This is the irreducible brillouin zone. See, if we uh, replicate this brillouin zone here, this another triangle, then this will be another brillouin zone. This will be another brillouin zone. See, if we replicate, go on replicating this, we get uh, actually the entire brillouin zone. So that's why it is called the uh, irreducible because we can't reduce it uh, further. So this is the uh, shortest uh, or the uh, the uh, the or the uh, optimized uh, zone actually. So uh, here um, the center of the brilliant zone is given by the tau point. Uh, tau m k are the actually high symmetry points. Uh, so the cent origin of the brilliant zone is given by the tau point. The midpoint of one of the edges of the brilliant zone is given by the m point, and one of the corners is given by the k point. So we need to know the coordinates because uh, we'll be uh, taking k vector. So this k vector will sweep from this entire irreducible brilliant zone so it will come back again from it will start from tau and it will go from tau k m then again it will come to tau as you can see here in the band diagram also the k vector 
so this is the uh, this axis is the k vector and this is this y y axis is the eigen frequency that's how we get the band diagram so this k vector sweeps from tau point c to m then m to k then k to again tau uh, so we need to know the coordinates first here so how uh, you can see that we have already uh, calculated here the k vector is given by 2 by 3 b1 plus 1 by 3 b2 so how we have calculated here is that so uh, as you can see that uh, uh, this is the uh, k point and uh, this is the m point okay so we need to go uh, from the origin that is the tau tau here to k this but we can't go directly from tau to k in in, in this line so for that uh, we need to move along the vectors so uh, the only vector which we can see that uh, the easiest path is the is along b1 so along b1 we move from starting from the origin so we go up to here and then we move from here to this point so now what is the total length so you can see that this is actually two third of b1 like if we uh, cut b1 into three components so we get uh, this length as uh, this length as two third of b1 and this straight length if we again cut b2 into three components so this length will be uh, equal to this this path so that is nothing but two third of b1 and one third of b2 so that's how we get the k point so this is the coordinate two, two by three one by three so tau is actually simple because it is in the origin so uh, we are not moving uh, along b1 and b2 so it is 0 b1 0 b2 that is 0 0 and for m actually we uh, what we do is that uh, let me rub it so uh, let me draw again this part okay so uh, for m we actually again move from this direction and we go to this edge that is the uh, midpoint uh, of the edges of one of the edges of brillouin zone so we go here then we go from there to this point to to get the m point so this is nothing but half of b1 and this length this horizontal line is nothing but half of b2 so that's how we get the m point so we got we got all the coordinates for, that is for tau of high symmetry point that is tau km now we define uh, this k vector so this is important because we will be sweeping sweeping this k vector uh, to get this uh, this axis axis values okay so k vector is nothing but alpha into k b1 so k b1 is nothing but it is written here as an expression it is actually the b1 vector only okay so alpha b1 vector plus beta b2 vector so we will put this b1 expression here and b2 expression here and we will uh, um, uh, reorganize the components um, uh, to get actually a k vector in terms of uh, so one component will come like this like this if i write a k vector like this so one component will come as ax and uh, another component uh, some expression will come as a y so this actually is your kx component and this actually is your ky component so this two terms are important because we will be using this in our console simulation so uh, alpha now uh, the question is what are what is uh, alpha and beta alpha and beta are nothing but uh, two numbers actually uh, so uh, these are basically some equations uh, will be uh, under some definite conditions so uh, what are the conditions actually we will see in the next slide uh, so we require the conditions for alpha and beta and that will be used in the console so uh, we define actually a k it is here um, it is a magnitude here so k is uh, uh, swept from uh, tau to you can see tau to m then again m to k then k to tau so we designate uh, the tau as the origin as zero m as 1 and uh, k as 2 and then tau as again 3 so uh, don't get confused with the uh, coordinates actually because these are the uh, the vectorial coordinates and these are actually the designated numbers uh, that is uh, this this is this is not a vector this is a scalar quantity and it is being uh, swept from 0 to 3 and this is a vector notation so these two are different so after uh, uh, giving the notation the from 0 to 3 uh, so now we can actually calculate this alpha and beta so uh, the alpha and beta are given by these conditions 
like from 0 to 1 uh, the alpha is given by this condition 1 to 2 alpha is given by this and k 2 to 3 alpha, alpha and given by this similarly it is uh, same for beta also now how we are getting this expression these are actually purely intuitive based uh, the, no, there are no specific or definite formulas are there uh, from where we have calculated it you just need to uh, uh, check uh, the uh, these coordinates 2 by 3 1 by 3 because we are moving from c tau to m so we are moving from uh, 0 to uh, 0 comma 0 to 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 then 0 0.5 to 2 by 3 we are going so you need to uh, uh, put uh, in alpha and beta you need to uh, uh, write equations in terms of k so that uh, for this range c is for this uh, so there are three ranges 0 to 1 uh, 1 to 2 and then uh, 2 to 3 so for each of the ranges you have to put uh, you have to write some equations uh, that will satisfy uh, these coordinates actually so if i like put one here so uh, that, that will be calculated alpha will be calculated as 0.5k that is k by uh, that is k by 2 so uh, or so uh, so for uh, k equals to 1 k equals to 1 means the m point this is the m point so for m point you see this is the 0 0.5 okay that is your uh, half of b1 so uh, that is your k by 2 actually so for k equals to if i put k equals to uh, 1 uh, we get alpha equals to half and that is nothing but your alpha this this value half half of b1 because we are writing uh, k vector as alpha b1 okay so b1 is this and alpha is your half so you need to write those expressions intuitively such that uh, this satisfies if you put whatever value here in the expression for alpha and beta you get uh, this uh, vector notation again okay so after uh, uh, achieving these expressions for alpha and beta uh, we will uh, uh, we'll, uh, use this condition and also uh, this uh, sweeping of k vector uh, will also use these conditions here so uh, this is the design methodology how we will actually uh, like this is the actually design you can see this is the uh, rhombus rhombus unit cell and you can see that some part of the circle uh, is inside the uh, unit cell actually so how will design it actually so first we shall uh, design the rhombus here in comsol using the coordinates and then we shall uh, draw circles okay uh, whose radius is actually at uh, the uh, at uh, one of the end points of the rhombus and then we shall uh, remove this part so so that this section of the circle uh, remains inside or only this section remains inside the circle okay so the, the basic theory is i think uh, it is clear so now we we'll, we shall move to the uh, comsol interface so whenever uh, you open uh, okay uh, let me close this uh, let me open comsol again so whenever you open comsol uh, like this it will take uh, at uh, one minute time and then you shall uh, you will uh, get an interface so you uh, you will see it soon okay so uh, in this interface uh, this will open up in your uh, uh, laptop or uh, desktop so you can see that there are some number of options called file home geometry material so these will be discussed later uh, here this is the important part that is your uh, model wizard and blank model so blank model is nothing but these are uh, uh, used by the developers actually uh, where actually, um, they have the freedom blank model means uh, you are uh, uh, um, that uh, you have the complete freedom to include uh, whatever kind of physics or module you want and model wizard is like uh, you you have to uh, like uh, by default you have to select um, physics and then uh, the uh, the module actually and by default they will give uh, some parameters like global parameters then whatever uh, the geometry part the components they will come by default but in blank model nothing will come by default you can edit so that is the freedom so before going to that uh, let me give a brief overview about comsol comsol is nothing but it is a multi-physics uh, simulation software multi-physics means like uh, you can uh, uh, put multiple kind of physics like uh, the for solving um, uh, any kind of uh, thing you can uh, 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 like uh, implement multiple physics uh, uh, to uh, solve uh, a complex uh, structure uh, how the structure is behaving so um, it is actually used for modeling and simulating the physics based problems uh, that is widely used in engineering physics and applied mathematics to simulate the behavior of systems in various fields these fields are like electromagnetics where we um, for designing uh, where uh, this is used for designing and analyzing the electromagnetic devices uh, wave propagation and uh, electromagnetic mo modes then structural mechanics is their acoustics fluid flow heat transfer chemical reactions so these are all uh, the 
applications where the console is used. So you then click here uh, model wizard. Then for band diagram, it as it is a 2D diagram, so uh, 2D band diagram. So we are uh, the geometry is also in 2D. So we will click here 2D, and there you, you will see that uh, pop window will pop up. That is uh, you, know, you need to select the physics. So you go to this radio frequency, click here, and then you shall see that electromagnetic frequency domain. So that is the EMW. So you click select this, then you add. After uh, this will come here. Then after adding this, you need to go to the study. So what what you need to study here because you have selected the physics. Now what kind of uh, uh, what is the thing you want to study? Whether it is the mode, what is the whatever whether it is it is the time domain analysis of frequency domain or or uh, eigen modes. So you click here. So you see that uh, in the top uh, it is given as eigen frequency. So you click here and then uh, you hit done. So after that. Uh, uh, console will take you to the main interface. You can see uh, this is the model builder window. See by default it has come global definition component definitions and uh, mesh size study results. Okay, so we shall dis discuss one by one. Uh, so this is the interface where your geometry will be seen. Uh, and after uh, coming to this interface, you you have to first what is the first uh, work is you have to define the length unit. So as you have seen here. Uh, our lattice constant is in micrometer, so we shall uh, okay. Uh, we shall take the geometry as uh, micrometer here, and then we shall go to global definition that is the parameter, and we shall define all the parameters here. That is the lattice constant, then k vector, uh, not k vector. That is the scalar k, then the k x and k y, and the radius of the circle. We shall define one by one. So I have already uh, simulated the structure here. So, because that will take uh, a lot of time for designing and then simulating. So, this you can see here. This is the parameter. This is the lattice constant. You write one, then third bracket, uh, then for micrometer, not uh, u is the symbol for micro. So you write it like this, and console will take the value. See, 10 to the power minus six. Then you define alpha and beta. So see here, console actually takes uh, this kind of equations as uh, uh, by condition called uh, if and else condition. So how it works actually, you see. Uh, if k lies if k lies between 0 to 1 then alpha is 0.5 k else if k lies between 1 to 2 then alpha is this else if k else uh, if k lies between 2 to 3 then alpha is given by this so how do we write it like this in console so he, he like uh, we write uh, if then give first bracket okay uh, then uh, write not uh, zero less than k less than one. We just write k less than one only. K less than one, then uh, comma alpha value is 0.5 into k. Then comma else if we don't write uh, else, we write just only if. So if then again we start the bracket. Then we write uh, k less than two. Uh, if for k less than two, uh, alpha is one by six into k plus two. Then we give comma. Then we don't write l else. We just write the final value. That then there is a third value for uh, two to k for the range of two to three. We write alpha is 2 by 3 into 3 minus k. Then we close the bracket for the first if, uh, and then we close the bracket for the uh, that um, the final if. So if you don't close the bracket now, if you give incomplete bracket, then console will give an error. See, fail to evaluate expression for parameter alpha. So it, it should be careful about the, the closing of brackets. So same it is done for beta. And then we take the scalar k. Uh, we initialize it. We give some value. It can be uh, like uh, zero. It can be uh, like uh, five, seven, whatever value is. We just you just need to initialize it. Okay. Uh, so this k actually will sweep from zero to three. So as you have seen here, this is the k. This is the k actually here. So this will uh, sweep from zero to three. So we have initialized it. Okay. And then cannot 4 pi by root 3a, as you have seen in the expression for b1 and b2, kx and ky. So kx and ky is actually alpha, kx is alpha into cannot root 3 by 2, and ky is this by given by this expression. R is the radius, it is taken from the book actually. Now, after doing all this, we go to the geometry part. So for rhombus, actually, what we do is that uh, we write all the coordinates here, we take uh, for rhombus, actually, like uh, you click the geometry here. And then you go, uh, see there are no rhombus options is there. So you need to click polygon. So after clicking polygon, uh, you just rename the level as rhombus. And then you go to the table here and you give all the coordinates, whatever coordinates uh, for the rhombus it is given. And then you hit build selected. You see uh, your rhombus is 
uh, will be visible in this uh, screen design screen now you go for for the circle the geometry it is uh, pretty much simple circle is there you just go there give the radius and uh, the circle center the center is actually i told that uh, uh, one of the uh, four endpoints of rhombus so first endpoint is the origin here so this uh, will be zero zero so you click build selected so now you see the design is not entirely visible in the screen so you go there and that is the zoom extends you click here so now the design is visible completely for circle two same minus a comma zero this then circle three then circle four so you uh, hit again, click here, zoom extends. Now the design is visible. Now you see that uh, we don't require this part of circle. So we need to uh, uh, remove this part of the circle. So what we do is that uh, we go geometry and then uh, booleans and partitions is there. We click here and then we go for partition domain. So this option will come. Uh, let me remove this. Now we need to party what is the domain so domain means a structure okay this is the structure circle so these are all domains so we need to partition this domain into this segment and and this sector sector segment okay so we need to click this 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 four circle we need to domain and partition with okay so partition with what so we need to partition with this edge so this two edge will separate this circle into two components so we need to click here edges and then we click this edge, this edge, this and this. Okay. Then we click build uh, selected. Okay. So now our domains have been partitioned. Now we go again to the geometry and then we hit click here, this delete option. We come here and then we select uh, called the domains. By default, it will be in object. So you click here domain and then you go there. See, now the domains have been separated. See, so you click this, this, this and this. So now you click build selected and then you click build all objects. OK, so you see that now our design has been is ready. OK. Now you need to put the material because these four sectors uh, of circle will be uh, uh, filled with air and this uh, and this part that is the this shape uh, will be filled with dielectric. So for this, you go to material option, then you click add material. So this add material interface will come here. So here you go, see, this is the built-in option. You click here, then you click air, and then you click add to component. After clicking not to global materials, but add to component. So here under the component option, uh, this uh, material part air will come, okay? Um, so this is the uh, air and uh, for dielectric, you again go to add material and then you again click air. Uh, this, uh, uh, this will come and then you rename it uh, as uh, dielectric actually. Um, so uh, after that, you need to uh, give the uh, the uh, refractive index of the dielectric. So for that, you go to this electromagnetic wave that is a physics interface, and uh, you it will be like this actually in console. You you expand it, and then you go go to wave equation. There you uh, go down, and you see that electric displacement field. So your electric field or your magnetic field, whatever you are visualizing. So that is actually by default uh, console uh, here you will get this option relative permittivity. So you change it to refractive index and then you go again to air. Then you go to material contents and then you give this option. Will You will see two tick marks for refractive index real part in imaginary. Imaginary is zero. So for dielectric, you give uh, square root of 13 because refractive index is given by root over of the dielectric constant. And this value is actually taken from the book itself. So you will get this value. So square root of 13 and for one uh, air, it is actually one. OK, so now we all these materials have been defined. Uh, we go to the periodic condition. So for periodic condition, you click here. Now, electromagnetic, you select this and then you right click here. So you will see that this is the periodic condition. You click here. So this option will come. Now you have to select the boundary because uh, here it will come uh, manual. OK, you select manual and then you give uh, the periodic condition. Now you see that this entire rhombus lattice is actually repeating uh, infinitely in the um, x direction and also in the y direction. OK, so that's how we get a 2D photonic crystal because this is the basic definition. 2D photonic crystal means the uh, lattice is repeating in two, two dimensions. OK, so as you can see that the, this lattice is repeating in x direction and y direction also. So that's how we get a 2D photonic crystal. So here you select this phase and carefully select it okay so you select uh, this also so how i, I have uh, moved this structure you just uh, right click on the mouse 
and then click it and then drag it okay so then you select this select this and uh, select this also this because this two sides uh, becomes a, a constitute a pair of uh, a periodic phase okay so these two sides you have to calculate it uh, like this is one uh, side you select all the boundary and this is one side select on boundary this is the per first periodic condition now for second periodic uh, this is uh, that is this phase and this phase so for second periodic you click you go there click again periodic condition and this will come okay then you select all the boundaries this boundary this this and then opposite phase this three boundaries okay now uh, after giving uh, you need to go down to the periodic condition here you will see type of periodicity so you have to select the flocket periodicity and under flocket periodicity you have to define the k vector so here you have to define kx and ky okay for both periodic condition 1 and periodic condition 2 okay so after doing this you go to mesh so what is mesh actually now see uh, uh, we have uh, all studied the maxwell equations uh, how uh, the maxwell equations are solved uh, but uh, all these uh, theoretical uh, uh, analysis that you have done for Maxwell's equation, these are actually for uh, infinite kind of structures or boundless structures. But uh, in reality, uh, in reality, actually all the structures are uh, finite, that is bound. Okay. So for finite uh, structures, the Maxwell equations actually um, uh, like uh, uh, changes a bit. So what the software does is that it will divide your entire uh, rhombus uh, whatever structure is there it will divide your structure into very minute uh, uh, geometric shapes okay it can be triangle it can be uh, tetrahedral okay uh, depending on the availability of uh, structures in in the software so it will be uh, divided into small small uh, geometrical shapes and there the console will for each geometrical shape console will solve the uh, the maxwell equations and whatever values uh, it will uh, it will um, uh, achieve it will store it in the matrix okay so this is the kind uh, this is the definition of actually mesh uh, so you have user control mesh and physics control mesh physics control mesh is that uh, the meshing is controlled by the physics that you have selected that is the electromagnetic waves frequency okay and another one is the user control user control means you have the control to uh, like you have the freedom to uh, uh, like to simulate your structure like uh, if uh, suppose say uh, this sector of a circle is very small the like say suppose it is coming here it is the, the size is very small so physics control mesh won't be able to uh, uh, take um, uh, won't be able to divide that uh, small structure into very fine uh, geometrical shapes so there you have to select the user control mesh and then have to uh, go for a very fine mesh there okay so you have that freedom but in physics control mesh like the in this structure we don't require uh, that kind that much kind of uh, finer mesh so you just click uh, physics control mesh then you see element size element size that is the what is the size of the smallest geometrical element of the mesh okay so there are a number of options from extremely coarse to extremely fine uh, so we just uh, we are uh, taking the finer option because if we go higher also so that will take uh, a huge amount of computation time and also uh, it depends on the uh, availability of ram so if your ram is like uh, less than uh, 8 gb that is 4 gb then it might create a problem simulating the structures with uh, finer mesh so with 8 gb ram uh, or 16 gb ram uh, we can easily handle this uh, so we are taking finer mesh and then we are clicking build all so see these are the small 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 triangle structures so that is dividing actually so console will solve the maxwell equations for each of these triangle and then it will save it save the data into the matrix so after doing all this we go to study so here uh, in the study you will see uh, this parametric sweep option won't be there okay uh, so let me uh, delete it i i will tell like you again so in uh, this option will come eigen frequency so here you go to this option called desired number of eigenfrequencies. So see here and how many bands are there for T mode. One, two, three, four. Okay, four bands. So I have taken here actually six bands. Uh, so number of uh, you can take four also. You can take six, but don't take much because it will increase the computation time. And uh, this is the uh, unit. Unit is in gigahertz. I have taken or you can take it actually in terahertz also but that doesn't matter that will not uh, hamper your uh, simulation but this is the important search for eigenfrequencies around so you take write it as one here 
and in bracket third bracket give it is as as tera terahertz why terahertz because like uh, the lattice constant diameter you can see that uh, it is in uh, micrometer one micrometer uh, so the eigen frequencies will be uh, will be coming in the terahertz uh, actually frequency range okay because if you uh, do the c by a uh, um, c by a analysis uh, so that will be in the 10 to the power 14 uh, um, um, dimension okay so the range actually so it will be coming in the one terahertz and then eigen frequency search method around shift you keep uh, larger real part because uh, in, if you click here closest absolute value then they don't uh, give the result that will give a wrong result so you keep larger real part here and uh, then you go to study one again click here right light click then you go to parametric sweep so as i have told you that k vector k that uh, uh, scalar quantity it sweeps from 0 to 3 so you click all combinations here then you click plus here see the parameters whatever whatever we have defined it will come here so you click here k then you go to click this parameter value list and this is the option called range you give the range here so entry method is step number of values logarithmic okay uh, so you give uh, number of values here so it starts from zero but uh, we don't start it from zero because at the zero and at uh, three there are actually discontinuities okay so we don't want those discontinuities so we just avoid this we click 0 0.1 and it stops at 2.9 and number of values that is the interval so we you can take it depending upon the uh, like resolution for higher resolution bands uh, you can take higher number of values but here for uh, getting the simulation in uh, lesser amount of time we take 52 or 55 maybe that is greater than 50 okay when you click uh, replace or add and then uh, okay after doing all this you go to uh, home then build all then again build mesh and then you click compute okay so here you see uh, the solver actually will uh, the has started the uh, simulating so it will take uh, a few minutes one in one or two minutes it will uh, simulate the structure you can also in the progress button you can also see uh, the uh, how the progress is going on that is 76 78 percent okay so it is almost done okay so after uh, getting this plot you can see this is the electric field normalized electric field plot so if you want to see the magnetic field you just go there in the results option you will see electric field emw click expand this go to surface then here data set will be your parametric solution solution two. okay you click this then you see this is the expression you see parameter value k is there all the parameter values have come and the all the eigen frequencies are there so this is the emw dot norm e that is the normalized electric field you just remove this only emw dot you just keep there and you keep h z just click there and see so this is the uh, your uh, your uh, this is the t mode so that is the z component of magnetic field uh, along the your entire uh, uh, the uh, your you know, two D lattice stru unit cell structure. Now for getting the band diagram, you click on the results and then right click. You go to one D plot, then you click this parametric solutions. Okay, you come again to one D plot group two. You click this right click again. You go to global option. There you click uh, parametric solution two here. Now you have to define the y axis. Now y axis is your eigen frequency. So you have to click emw, okay, dot f r e q, okay, uh, into a uh, divided uh, divided by that is your the uh, velocity of light that is the c. So c is actually uh, by default uh, console takes the name of c as c c dash c underscore constant. So this is the and uh, you click there enter. This will come, and this expression is nothing but your uh, this uh, this one omega a by two pi c. So omega, if you expand it two pi f, so your two pi two pi get cancelled. So it is actually f into a by c. So I have done actually this one. Okay, so f into a by c. So this is the y-axis data. For x-axis, you just change it from eigen frequency to outer solutions, and then you go to this plot option. Click here. It will take few seconds. See so uh, we have got the band diagram okay so this is your uh, band diagram for the t mode so for uh, this is the kind of uh, this is the legend actually called so you can remove it by going to 1d plot group again and go down and click off so you see this for the t mode 
so see the t mode this is one band and then we get a photonic band gap and then again the band start so yes see this is the first band first eigenfrequency band then we get a photonic band gap and then the band gap starts so this is for the t mode now uh, i won't uh, like simulate again for the tm mode you just what you do is that you go here elect the physics and you see uh, the electric field component solved for so for t mode uh, just remember that always for t mode you click in plane vector and for tm mode you just click out of plane uh, the all the analysis remains same and then, then you just go build all then build mesh and then you hit compute and then you will get this kind of band structure for tm that is see the band, two bands meet here and there is a band gap again and then this will start okay so i hope uh, that is clear and uh, i hope that you will be able to uh, simulate uh, the photonic uh, um, uh, the photonic uh, band gap for uh, 2d photonic crystal structures okay so thank you so this is all for the lecture on analysis and engineering of 2d photonic band structures if you have any queries uh, regarding any part of this lecture you can drop an email to this particular email address thank you mm -hmm.